Rick and Morty was Justin Roiland's parody of Back to the Future. He debuted it at Channel 101, Dan Harmon's animated short festival. Harmon called the short a bastardization, pornographic vandalism. So if I wanted somebody dead to say my grandmammy, all I'd have to do is put some coins in a vending machine and then it, Scott will come out and kill him, kill her off for me. The audience reaction was aggressive, violent, and joyful. But the show drew no commercial attention. So Royland refined the shock humor as a side project. Harmon went on to create community for NBC, where his dark but precise humor allowed him to make episodes on school shootings and civil war-like riffs. When he was fired from community, Adult Swim reached out to start a show. The head of the network wanted a mainstream hit. We know what this giant head wants. Ahem. <clears throat> show me what you got. Jim, you heard the said. Show me what you got. Knowing little about animation, Harmon called Royland, who re-pitched the adventures of Doc and Marty. The two broke down the story, sold the pilot, and wrote the first draft all in one day. Royland had just come off three straight failed pilots for Fox, and was wary of taking any studio assistance. They were actually prepared for much bigger battles with the studio and standard and practices over their content. But the president of Adult Swim reads the scripts himself, calls and gives the creators praise, and will call standard and practices on his own. To date, there haven't been any really big battles over content, just minor notes and syndication guidelines. However, this ended up actually hurting the creators a bit. Justin Roiland and Dan Harmon had no one else to blame if the show was subpar. There were no external factors bringing it down. They have stated that this is the reason for the extended season 3 delay. <coughs> Morty. The main influences are Ren and Stimpy, The Simpsons, and Pendleton Ward. But Harmon states that the dark and edgy tone is actually on the shoulders of Doctor Who and Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. The show also uses South Park as a gauge for what they can and can't get away with. They are careful to stay away from social issues that South Park might tackle, considering South Park makes episodes in six days, and Rick and Morty takes 11 months. The first thing they had to decide was the length of the episodes. Royland had experience with 11 minute plots. Justin being a big fan of Adult Swim, an already like a built in Adult Swim viewer that he was, mm -hmm. he was already thinking about this thing as a 15 minute thing, even if it meant we had to do a half hour that was two separate episodes like the old school cartoon. Yeah, yeah. Kind of. But Harmon and Adult Swim fought for 22, which signaled faith in the creators, as this was a first for the network. I was more passionate about the half hour thing because Adult Swim was talking about that early precisely because they were talking about our show as if it could be different. It could be of the beginning of a new phase for Adult Swim. And though Royland caved to the 22 minute pitch, his 11 minute style was a huge asset. Rick and Morty is written pretty strictly with the hero's journey. Watch this Wisecrack video on it. Harmon states that every story, from the Odyssey to your standard fart joke, follows eight simple steps. Harmon called it the story embryo. And to keep the episodes fresh, the writers had to exhaust everything the audience knew in the first act, something Royland was very good at because he was used to doing plots in half the time. One of the things that the writers have to be careful of is making sure Morty is as narratively important as Rick is, which means keeping him away from being an audience surrogate. That responsibility is passed on to the side characters as much as possible. Now the rigidity of the plots are not universal across the entire production. There's room for improv, and most of the dialogue is written using retroscripting, which is giving actors a direction of the scene, but inexact lines. Also using outtakes as intakes, keeping in stutters and vocal imperfections. Oh jeez, Rick! What'd you do to Frank? Pretty obvious, Morty. I froze him. Rick and Morty are meant to be two sides of the same brain, Rick being gruff, selfish, and unapologetic, and Morty being more childish, naive, and curious. The original show was really contrasting Rick and Morty, existentialism versus caring about something. But as the show progressed and Rick got a little bit of humanity, and Morty realized how much the universe doesn't care about him, the characters drifted toward each other, and some of the tension between the two of them was gone. This has been reconciled by the family getting the character arc in season 3. Jerry's pursuit of an assertive side, which he's shown flashes of, Beth's role in the family, and Summer and Morty trying to understand family relationships in the world in a chaotic environment. The family is getting closer and closer to becoming an absurd hero, someone who is enlightened, but happy despite it. Something Rick has struggled with for decades. <coughs> Morty. Rick is still really hard to understand. We know things are mattering to him more and more, 
Take it from me, Ice. You can't just float around space not caring about stuff forever. But we really can't tell how much. There is still so much chaos in his character, which makes him interesting. One of the best gauges for Rick was his contrast with Jerry. Jerry is very comfortable being a robot. Life is effort and I'll stop when I die! And Rick hates him for it. They're not robots, Rick! It's a figure of speech, Morty! They're bureaucrats! I don't respect them! They really stand on opposite ends of the spectrum, which probably has something to do with why Beth was attracted to Jerry after Rick left. The writers have stated that Beth is okay with Rick dragging her kids across galaxies because she's scared he's gonna leave again. They also said that she admires her father for having the guts to leave her mother, which Beth didn't have until she was given an ultimatum. While Morty holds Rick accountable ethically, Summer has a more social agenda. In fact, most of the episodes where they're paired together deal with social issues. This is highlighted when Summer becomes the idealic character and Morty shows her the nihilism of the world. Nobody exists on purpose. Nobody belongs anywhere. Everybody's gonna die. Come watch TV. You can tell how fleshed out the characters are by the way the writers speak about them. They talk about them as if they're real people in a different room. It's not their job to write them, it's their job to put them in a situation where they have to make a choice, because we know how the characters work. Thanks for watching. 55 years, not bad. Donated to an embarrassing amount of Kickstarters.